Welcome to Pegging Coffee Talk. Here are your hosts, Oswin and Lord Knight. So this is kind of a special episode of Pegging Coffee Talk. We yes. have come up on our almost one year mark. Yay! And I know it's incredible, isn't it? Who would want to listen to me for more than a year? <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> Honestly, I you know I I didn't think we would get the amount of listeners that we have, and I think it's a wonderful thing. We're we're reaching out to people, and people are getting something out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Rage porn, <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe, but it's something. I'll take it. <laughs> So anyway, I thought in this episode, we could discuss something a little more out of the ordinary from our usual topics. Okay. Let's talk about incarnation. Okay. What would you like to know about it? Well, in our tradition, first degrees, we don't allow first degrees to incarnate. We don't allow second degrees to incarnate either. R right. Only third degrees can incarnate. Yes. Why is this? Because it's assumed by the time you've reached the level of uh, third degree, you've done all the work and everything that you need to do. You've done your, you're doing your meditations. You've cleared out the junk and the pathway to allow a deity to possess your body temporarily is a little bit easier. Okay. But who's to say, well, I mean, what is it about second? I can sort of understand where you're coming from there on first degrees. But second degrees, I mean, second degrees have put a lot of work into themselves and well, the their work for the craft. And the majority of the time when you're working for a degree, you act like that degree as you get closer to it. I, I don't know how to explain that. I okay. mean, there, 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 there is a growth. There are certain things we are looking for. We're looking, you know, third degrees should be quite self-aware. I can look at people going, hey, yeah, I, I'm being a dick. <laughs> right. You know, yeah, I am being an asshole. I, you know, but that's my point, that we should be aware enough to know that we know our faults. And we try to work with them and do better at them. That just because we are aware of them doesn't mean we actually get rid of them all the time. Okay, yeah. True. Right. Because a lot of times you're you're, you're still... Faults are a hard thing to get rid of. Exactly. You can always work with them, but... But you get a better appreciation when you got the other person going, I'm just... Never mind. <laughs> right. Well, and it also helps when you have, you know, another second degree or third degree working with you on these yeah. things, and they're like, um, yeah, no. No. <laughs> he, he, he really is being a dick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, he's absolutely right. We're not going to sugarcoat this. He's been a dick. <laughs> so what else can you tell us about? Because, you know, it's, I'm, I'm a first degree. I've never well, even I, had a, I've never even had a desire to incarnate. Well, first of all, of course, you know, mysteries and stuff like that. We're not allowed to actually discuss how we do this. Right. But that's what I'm saying. I mean, right. what else can you tell us about incarnation? I can tell you what it's like. Okay. All right. And it is a story of contradictions all at the same time. Because you have a sense of yourself while at the same time you don't. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 but that's what this whole entire state's like. It's kind of like you, you're you sitting in the back seat. And it's funny because the first time you ever do this is you're sitting there and you start to realize that you are having the thoughts about words coming out of your mouth after they've come out of your mouth instead of before. Okay. Well, then... I, so that, that that's a little disconcerting to be sitting there going... Because you're quite used to while you're doing stuff like we're doing right now, talking, you sort of hear you have the thought in your head before you speak. Right. And at this state, it's the other way around. You hear words coming out of your mouth, and you're going, "Oh, 
they're talking to me too. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So again, you know, when you start to realize, you know, you're no longer making your gestures that you normally do. You don't, you're not talking the way you do. It's really weird. <laughs> so it is possession. It is. It is actual possession. Maybe maybe not in the sense, you know, where, you know, we need an old priest and a young priest and <laughs> no. some holy water. No. no and, <laughs> but and, it is possession. And even then, you know, I, I'm not saying that this is the full scope of that deity. This could just be a fraction of that power that and knowledge f- flowing through you. I don't think we could actually hand our bodies up, can actually handle the full scope. So this is just so do so well. And in, in regards to that, do you think that it's more along the lines of when a deity possesses you, they're using like a dial? Uh, yeah. That says, okay, this person can only handle <laughs> two or three on the dial. This person I, I, can handle maybe hope, a four. I would hope so, but I don't think that's always the way it works. <laughs> I think more like it's more like, yeah, we're going to set this at 11, but there's not an 11. I said we're going to set it at 11. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, see, like, you know, in our tradition, we have something we, we refer to as lichens. And right. these are people who follow the high priest and priestesses around in circle while they're incarnating. Right. I believe in other traditions, they call them handmaidens right. and squires and right. uh, this is a specific, things like that. Yeah, these are specific roles because these people prevent us from doing stupid stuff like walking into fires. Okay. All right. Because you got to remember the deity mindset is, okay, fire. Yeah, me and him are old friends. You right, know, what do I have to be afraid well, of? Let's what do just I do have this. to be afraid of? I, I, I remember when he was just a little ripper snapper, <laughs> just a spark <laughs> <laughs> in the source's eyes. It doesn't have a concept. Right. So, yes, it's good to have people kind of watching you, make sure you don't do anything to injure yourself. Okay. You know, I, I'm sorry, you've been in a circle where people have incarnated what is, uh, from your yes, point, I have. From you, let's hear your point of view. <laughs> I mean, because I re- well, I remember the first time that it happened, and I was not aware that it was going to happen. The energy inside the circle completely changed. It was like just snap of the fingers, and it was something completely different. It was so much more intense. The the actions of the priest and priestess were not what I was used to because these were people, you being one of them, were these were people who I had interacted with on a you know, some on a daily basis, others on a almost daily basis. I worked with some of these people in an office. Um so yeah, it was uh it was really interesting and in some ways it was actually kind of scary but you know i started noticing certain things happening and in the way people were acting and i became more aware of what was actually going on in circle (laughs) and it was i don't know it was it was a phenomenal feeling to know that that's what was going on (laughs) <laughs> it probably took me until the end of ritual to realize that Yell had incarnated, that that's what had actually happened. But I remember that feeling. But yeah, it was kind of weird watching watching the priest and priestess move around the circle because you did. You just kind of moved around. You didn't stay in one place anymore. <laughs> you kind of moved around and inter- interacted with people on a completely different level. And... You were, was it you and the priestess were just, the, you were drawing out emotions from people that people didn't even know they had. Well, see, it's because it's funny because on our end, especially when it's over with, it it takes a while. And I don't know if you've ever noticed, it takes us a while to like pull our personalities back together. 
No, I never After. noticed that. <laughs> I mean, but it, I mean, even in our heads, because I mean, it, it, it's kind of like, oh yeah, there's my sense of humor. Somebody step on it right quick before it gets away. <laughs> Stop that sense of humor. Don't let it run away. Don't let it run away. It, it's not that big as it is. I need it. <laughs> it's the only redeeming quality I have. Right. <laughs> I mean, but pulling that back together, taking that time. I mean, I remember doing a lot. I, I don't remember a lot of the feast afterwards. Really? I mean, I re- that remember long? them, but I don't. So it really does take a while for you to it, 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 recollect it, yourself and yeah, I mean, get it, back to some sort of quote unquote normalcy. I mean, it's kind of like it's kind of like being stoned, but not, but not. <laughs> I mean, I, I, gee, that's not vague at all. I, <laughs> your thoughts are acting like you know you've just smoked a big old blunt. But so you kind of you kind of feel that that high that I, disconnected feeling that off center okay type situation. But could it? Because from what you're describing, I I see it more as like an astral projection type thing where you are literally just kind of watching things happen. It, well, during it, yeah, in a way, it's kind of like you know when it happens, I feel like I'm like in the back seat. Okay, but you're talking about afterwards. I'm talking about afterwards. I I normally I, I feel like I'm sometimes I feel like I'm like really stoned. So or it my is thoughts act like that. So it is that disconnected but connected feeling. Yes. You're there, but you're not. Right. It's that same feeling that you, that you might get like when you're when you're sick and you're running a fever and you're kind of not all with it. Okay. Yeah, like without it, actually feeling bad, but it's just that that right. It's, it's that same kind of uh, headspace feeling when you've got a fever that's higher than one hundred and one, right? And you're just kind of like, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and I don't know about everybody else. I know with us, uh, that's when we run our mouths the most, and you take us out in public, and we go, "Oh yeah, look, she's mad because her husband's boinking the babysitter." Oh no, we don't take you out in public. <laughs> We leave you at home <laughs> for that reason. <laughs> okay, there was this one time <laughs> we learned from our mistakes. <laughs> so, what else can you tell us about incarnation? I mean, can you tell us how how you manage the feelings? Like afterwards? It's, well, I mean, there's not really a lot of feelings to feel afterwards. You're just kind of blitzed. I, I, well, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, how do how do you deal with that? How do you manage that? Is it, are, this, are there this, grounding this, techniques? Or there's there... some grounding techniques. Oftentimes, we'll like use water to ground in. Okay. All right. Because water is a is the trans medium of the elements. Okay. So we can use it to, I don't know how water does it, but they, it just seems to almost like it short circuits you. Okay. So if you ground in water, I know that's, I know there's probably a lot of people going, what the hell? You know, if you go into a really intense ritual and you're in that real, try it, see what happens. <laughs> But it does. It, it just it takes you a while to get your mind back to where you are. You know, I, I, I remember like we do a like a Sabbath on a weekend or something. And Sunday kind of walk around like I've got a hangover. Yeah, pretty much. Maybe I only have one or two beers, but still walk around like I got a hangover for a day. Then I go back to work. And that's where I would get in the most trouble. Because at that point, you're still... Yeah, you're, you're still, still trying to bring yourself you, back. You're still trying to bring yourself back, but you're still kind of you, you're you're a little bit more solid in your feelings and stuff. But you still got this part of you that wants that does stuff. So when you're sitting there in the office and your other coworkers come in and you start answering their questions before they ask them, 
And you see that look on their face like, uh... But it's not like a no-filter situation? No, there, there is some filter, yes. Some filter. <laughs> Unlike Sunday, where there is no filter, it's just... Right. <laughs> okay. So there is some filter, but you you jump ahead... Yes. On a lot of conversations? On a lot of conversations. Because you're like, hey, yeah, I knew where this was going to end before it even began. Uh... It's like, you know what? I really don't feel like having this conversation. conversation? Yes. No. no. 22. 22. Go home. <laughs> Go home. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What? No, it would be more like, no, just put your PTO slip in. It's under this file name, under this thing. Go look it up. <laughs> if you can't find it, let me know again. <laughs> and please answer your phone this time before they call again. Right. <laughs> Now get back to work. Now get back to work and leave me alone. <laughs> you know, I think after years of working that one job, I, th- I think my, my, my co-workers were just like, yep, every so often just just, just ignore them. <laughs> Go with it. Don't ask questions. <laughs> right. Somebody new comes in and they're like, oh, no. no. It's kind of like that time of the month for him. Just, just ride it. Let it just, go. Just, just ride it. <laughs> Abuse them. Go ahead. <laughs> You know, my bo- well, my boss knew about our religion and stuff like that, and he had some idea of what some of the stuff that went on. And I think he actually enjoyed the times right after Grand Sabbaths and oh, stuff like really? that. Oh, really? Yeah, he's, he, it, it was like the best time for him to get stuff done, for me to get stuff done. Oh, okay. Because it was just like, okay, go do this. No, 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 I know what time it is. Yeah, yeah, you'll be really creative about this. Go, go now. <laughs> <laughs> Get that woman to leave me alone. <laughs> right? I don't know how you do it, but you're so good at this, especially at this time. Just just do it. Just, just, see, and this would not be funny, but you know my boss. Right. I'm speaking of, and yes, he would actually do this stuff. <laughs> yeah, he would. So anything else you can tell us without divulging mysteries or I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it f- just on a whim. So it's not something you do just like for every ritual or. Well, I'm not going to say that. Okay. Yeah. I could say it's doing it for every ritual and typically we do. Okay. To some degree. But if you just read a book two months ago, no, you should be attempting to incarnate. All right, so you think you think this is something that is better done or best attempted once you have had instruction? I, I, I think it is better because, again, we can't control what people do. Right. I'm going to tell you, if you are not prepared for it 100%, yeah, I, I could see where it could shatter someone's psyche in about, like, two seconds flat. Well, not even that long, you know, as soon as it hits. So, again, work with somebody who knows, who has done it. Who has done it, knows what in the world they're doing that you trust. I mean, this is something, I'm sorry, it's not something you can just learn in a book. Because the training on this is so specifically you. Okay, yeah. Does that make sense? I cannot see me teaching somebody how to do this stuff in a classroom. Does that make sense? A little bit. In other words, it has to be one-on-one instructions. There, There's no other way around it. Oh, okay. Is that personalized? All right. One of the reasons we can't tell you how we do it is because it is personalized to each person. In other words, you can't do it. I can't sit there and do a class of 30 people at one time. I can do 30 people. Right. You, you, well, yeah. Okay. So you don't, you can't just say, well, this is, this is the way you do it. Right. Because everybody's going to do it a little, well, everybody's going to handle it a little bit differently. Exactly. And then there's takes that training and that patience to help people learn how to put themselves back together afterwards. I mean, because you, your psyche's kind of like just all hanging on ah, with each other going, eh, and you got to kind of sometimes 
manually reel it back in. Manually sit down, do some meditation, stuff like that, and go, okay, I gotta, gotta get my thoughts back together. So again, this, it, it takes training. It really does take real training. This is not something you want to do as a parlor trick. But now, are there, are there people who can just pretty much naturally do this? I'm not going to say people can't innately do it. I know they can. But, again... You would still suggest some training? I would training. still suggest some training. You definitely better been meditating for quite a number of years now every day. And really digging into your psyche and stuff like that to do this. All right. You know, I'm not going to say it ain't dangerous or without risk. But again, if you're going to do it, then you, at the very least, you need to have somebody there watching you to make sure you just don't. Right. Run off, you know. And, and, and again, into, again, because again, here's your problem. Just like I said earlier, we have lichens to watch us to make sure that we do not walk into fires. Right. So if you're doing this by yourself, there's you're, nobody there to. Right. You're potentially exposing yourself to danger. Right. And you won't be able to stop it. No. <laughs> so make, making sense there. I mean, again, like I said, uh if you just read a book a couple of months ago and it's only been a few years, what? No, don't. And as soon as I said that, there's like twelve people. Going, I'm gonna do that now. <laughs> Maybe. All right. I, just to let you know. I have warned y'all. <laughs> right. Right. The warning's out. The warning's out. If you hurt yourself or anything, not my fault. That's all you. Right. We did not tell you to do that. All right. You do you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. Join us next week for another episode. Pagan Coffee Talk is brought to you by Life Temple and Seminary. Please visit us at lifetempleseminary.org for more information, as well as links to our social media. Facebook, Discord, Twitter, YouTube, and Reddit. We travel down this trodden path, the maze of stone and mire. Just hold my hand as we pass by a sea of blazing pyres And so it is the end of our days So walk with me till morning breaks And so it is the end of our days So walk with me till morning